So factorizing into two brackets. So this is the reverse process of expanding two brackets. And it's important to think of that and remember how that works. So we're going to start by creating our two brackets. Now what we need to think about is where do we normally get that x squared from when we expand brackets? And that comes from multiplying the x's together in the front of the bracket. So we've now taken care of that. Now we're going to switch our focus to the end. So this number here comes from multiplying these two numbers together. So we're going to think about what are the possibilities. So it could be 6 and 1, because they multiply to make 6, or it could be 3 and 2. So there's two choices. How do we decide? Well, only one of them is right, because now that we've got those choices, we're going to focus on the middle. And think about what we do when we expand. So we expand and we get four different parts and then we add or subtract to combine the middle parts. So this number seven has got to be formed by either adding or subtracting these. And I think we can see clearly that these two add to make seven, whereas these two only add to make five. So it's not that section. So these are the numbers that are going to go in our brackets because 6 times 1 will give us the 6 on the end and 6 plus 1 will give us the plus 7 in the middle. It doesn't really matter which one goes into which bracket at this simple stage. So just to sort of confirm and look at it, so we've got x times x, that will give us x squared x times 1 would give us x, 6 times x would give us 6x, and 6 times 1 gives us 6, and we can see that if we put those two together, we get our 7x. So you can always check by reversing the process, but I'm not going to do that every time. So let's do a couple more examples here. So set up our brackets. Because these are nice, easy ones, we just start always by putting the x's in the front to get our x squared. Now we're looking at 14 and how we can use 14. So make 14 by multiplying. So it's either 14 times 1 or it's 7 times 2. Those are the only two possibilities. So we're looking for the 1 that's going to give us a 5. So 14 and 1 or 14 take away 1 is not going to give us 5. However, 7 take away 2 does give us 5. Now we need to be a bit more careful here because actually we want minus 5. So that means we want minus 7 and plus 2. Again, at this stage, it doesn't matter which bracket they go into. OK, so notice we figured out which was the right number combination and then thought about the signs. Don't try and do all of it at once because then it can get confusing. So one more here. So we'll put our brackets there and we'll do the easy bit, put the X's in the front. So we've got 21 this time. What numbers make 21? So there's always 21 and 1. That's always a, an example. So the other one is going to be 7 and 3. And 21 and 1 is never going to make 10, whether I add or subtract. So that's not the right one. So it's definitely this one. Now, now we're going to focus on the sign. So we want minus 10. We also need to end up with plus 21. So if we're going to end up with a plus result, they either both have to be positive or they both have to be negative. If they were both positive, we're not going to get minus 10. So they must both be negative. So we've got minus 7 and minus 3. So minus 7 times minus 3 gives us plus 21. Minus 7x minus 3x gives us minus 10x. So that's the basic way of doing factorising. So now we're going to look at the what we have to do extra, shall we say, 
if we've got slightly more complex quadratic expressions to start with. Oops, sorry, paper doesn't want to come. Here we go. So what is it about this that makes it more complex? The fact that it's got a number in front of the x squared, that's where the added complexity is going to come in. And we'll talk this through. So we're going to start with creating brackets again. So the first thing that's going to be a bit different here is the fact that there are two ways that we can get 4x squared. So we could have a 4x, sorry, there and an x there. 4x times x will give us 4x squared. But we could also have 2x times 2x. Both of those actually will give us 4x squared. And at this stage, we don't know which one is going to be the right one. So the next thing we're going to look at as normal is we're looking to see what numbers will multiply together to make 6. So we've got 6 and 1 or 3 and 2. So there's not too many choices. Now, the added complexity is now, although these two both look like they would make 5 if we were doing it the normal way, which is true, what we've got to remember is that these numbers here that are going to go in these spaces are no longer going to be multiplied by just x in most cases. So in this case, the number here would be multiplied by 4x, so it's going to get 4 times the size. Here, both of these will get multiplied by 2x, so it's added complexity. So here's the how I suggest you figure that out. So I'm going to create a little bit of a chart. So I'm going to start with looking at the top possibility because we still don't know which of those it is. So we're either going to multiply these numbers by 4x or x, depending on which bracket they're in. So let's try the 6 and the 1 combination first of all. So 6 times 4 would give me 24. And 1 times x would give me x. Now, there's no way to combine those to get minus 5, so that is not going to work. However, we do need to check the other way around this time. So we need to see if it would work if we used the numbers in the opposite brackets. So now it really does matter which bracket you put numbers in. So 1 times 4x and 6 times x gives us 6x. But I can add them to make 10 or take them away to get 2, but I cannot make 5. So that doesn't work either. So now we're going to try our other possibilities here. So we've got 3 and 2. So 3 4s are 12. And 2 times x is 2x. Again, that's not going to make 5. We need to check out and try it the other way around. So 2 4s are 8x, and 3x's are 3x. Now, if we take 3 from 8, we will get 5. So that is a possibility. OK? In fact, it is the one that we're going to need. I'm just very quickly going to prove that it's not the 2x, 2x combination by doing the chart with that as well. Now, because in this case, um, this is the same as this, there's no point doing 6 and 1 and 1 and 6 because you're going to get the same result each time. So 1 and 6 is going to give us 2x and uh, 12x. That's not going to give us 5. And if we do 3 and 2, we have 6x here and 4x here, and again, that's not going to give us 2. So this is the only combination that works. Now we've got to start thinking about the signs. So we want minus 5x. So we need that to be minus 8x and that plus 3x. 
Now, we're not putting minus 8 and 3 into our brackets. These are the numbers that go in the brackets because these are the numbers that multiply together to make 6. So we did 2 times 4 to get the 8, so that has to be the minus. And we did 3 times x to get 3, so that one has to be plus. So the final thing that we've got to be, let's just cross that x, that's gone. The final thing we've got to do is make sure they go in the right bracket. So we want the minus 2 to multiply the 4x. So it must go in this bracket because at never at any time do we multiply the two, num two terms within the same bracket. It's always one of these and one of those. So it has to be in the opposite bracket if we want it to be multiplied by the 4x. So obviously the 3 has to go there. So let's just check that through. So we've got 4x times x, that gives us 4x squared. We've got 4x times minus 2, that's going to give us minus 8x. Then we've got plus 3 times x, that's going to give us plus 3x. Plus 3 times minus 2, it's going to give us minus 6. And then if we combine this middle section together, minus 8 plus 3 is going to give us that minus 5x that we started with. OK, so let me do a couple more examples of these. So here's a slightly less challenging one. Why is it slightly less challenging? Sorry, I'm going to swap to a different pen. So that's going to be red. OK, uh, it's slightly less challenging than one we did before because 3x squared can only happen one way, and that's to have 3x and x. There's no other ways to do that because 3 is a prime number. So that narrows down our combinations to check out. Now we're going to look at 8. What's the possibilities? What multiplies to make 8? So we've got 8 and 1 and 4 and 2. So now we're going to set up our little chart so we can figure out which one it is that we actually need. So we're going to have 3x here and x here. So let's try... Um, it's, it's always worth sort of having an idea of which one might work best, but I'm going to do them all here. So we're going to have 8 and 1, 1 and 8, 4 and 2, 2 and 4, sorry, like that. So 8 threes are 24x, 1 times x is x, so that one is not going to give me 14. 1 th times 3, it's going to give me 3x. 8 times x is going to give me 8x. Again, I can't make 14 of those. 4 threes are 12x. 2 times x is 2x. That, if we add them together, will make 14. Just to prove it's the only possibility. So we've got 2 times 3x is 6x, 4 times x is 4x, and that one won't work. So there really is only ever going to be one choice. So we need this choice here. Now we're fortunate here because everything's positive, so that means that the signs are going to be positive. So the main thing we've got to do here is make sure we get them in the right bracket. So we want this 4 to multiply the 3, so it has to be in the opposite bracket. And so the 2 is going to go in here. All right, let's do one more here. This time we're back to a situation where there's two possibilities for our bracket. So there's 1. And this would be the other possibility. So the, way, the reason why this one's a bit easier, though, is because if we look now at the end, there's only one way to make 5, and that's 5 and 1. So we've got less choices this time here. So let's start with the 6xx version. So we've got 6x here and x. 
So it's either five and one or one and five. Those are the only two options. So five sixes are 30. One times X is X. That's not going to make 17. One times six is six X. Five times X is five X. And again, that doesn't make 17. So it's not this bracket, set of brackets. So now we're going to do the same for the others so we know what which way round the numbers need to go in the brackets. So we've got 2x and 3x here. And it's 5 and 1 or 1 and 5 again. So 5 times 2 is 10x. 1 times 3 3x, that doesn't make 17. 1 times 2 is 2x. 5 times 3 is 15x. 2 and 15 make 17, so there's our possibility. So it's now about making it, um, I say possibility, certainty. Um, it's now about getting these two numbers in the right bracket. So we want 1 times the 2x. So it must go in the other bracket, which means that the 5 has to go here. So that's how we factorise into two brackets.